Hello and good uh, good day to you. This is Thomas Keegan um, on behalf of LibertarianProgressive.com. Today's date is June the 24th. It's Sunday, 2012. And today I have um, William uh, Drummond II, also known as Cleve, and he is running for the U.S. House of Representatives to represent District Number 1 in Florida. And um, <clears throat> now, uh, the, the, I, I do want to mention, I. I have um, endorsed uh, um, uh, Mr. Fretz, um, Kalen Fretz, who's running as a libertarian, but I do want to give equal time here. And honestly, um, here's one of the biggest mistakes I think Ron Paul made in the Republican primaries is he didn't speak out for Gary Johnson when he was um, uh, you know, shunned from the debates. And I think honestly, when you have two people that have you know, maybe some similar ideas, it actually strengthens both of them. I think. Um, Ron Paul might have gotten some props for that, and he and and actually having Gary Johnson there as a backup in the Republican primaries. If you remember those debates, I mean they could have been like a tag team, and I think it would have strengthened the whole campaign overall. But um, anyways, uh, it, it's um, but I would like to get um, w Williams' ideas here, and some people might like him um, as a candidate. You know, who am I to say? I'm just I just want to interview and uh, give him a f fair shot here and um, hear his thoughts and speak to someone who's putting themselves out in the arena when there's so much going wrong with this country and, and a lot of people are uh, uh, doting and, uh, and stuff like that. Now, I'm not saying everyone is, but um, uh, William, uh, good to talk to you today. I do appreciate your time here. And, um, and uh, so let me ask you the, the same thing I'll, I'll ask everyone. What is... Um, what drives you? What uh, is the thing that gets you up in the early, morning early or um, keeps you up late at night? Well, personally, in this area, it's the fact that there's not enough jobs for people who actually want to work. Uh, the economy is as such that people cannot find gainful employment. And without the employment, you wind up with crime problems, you wind up with property values dropping, you just wind up with a boatload of social issues when people are not working. And what got me into this was I was watching C-SPAN and I was watching not to grown men debate. Instead, what I saw was a bunch of toddlers fighting over a stick on a playground. Yeah, it's, it's you know what, um, and that reminds me, you're actually not quite an independent. You're on the reform party, is that correct? That and is now, I remember that, that, like, the very first election that I ever took part in was when I turned 18. And if I, I, I turned 18 on election day, um, and that year was 1992 when Ross Perot was able to uh, run. Um, now, I do think he made a mistake from dropping out and coming back in because I think he could have won if he hadn't have dropped out. He was ahead in the polls, and he clearly won the debates. But, um, and, and ever since then, I've always been an independent, but, um, uh, and so I, I wasn't, you know, it's, and then the reform, reform party has had a couple things, but I mean, here's a remnant of the reform party, and, and so that's pretty exciting, and, uh, and at that time, people were sick of it. I, I mean, that's just to kind of show that people um, are ready, and, uh, and so they were kind of, unfortunately, I, I guess, um, you, you know, the last 20 years or so since that time, you know, the Republicans and Democrats um, uh, stopped the League of Women Voters from uh, moderating the debates and set up a commission that's run by Republicans and Democrats forming really um, a cartel. And uh, so, um, so, so yes, uh, I, I watch C-SPAN a lot too, and, and you see them. What, what are some of the issues that, 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 that drive you, um, Cleve, that, that makes you feel like, um, you know, they're not grown up, they're arguing about, they're, they're squabbling, right? Yes, they're squabbling. I mean, when you take, uh, the, the Constitution says that the government is set up to take care of the nation and its people for the betterment of the whole. And I don't see that. They have quit looking after everyone, and they're only looking after special interests, and I hate to say it, the mega rich. Everyone else, to me, from what you can see in their debates, they don't care. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's their actions, their words. Can you give some examples? Like, um, like you're a commercial artist, is that right? And, um, yeah. Yeah, and I'm looking at one of your um, 
I, I assume it's a painting, right? The one that you had sent on the United States of Greed and Money. Yes. And um, uh, what kind of um, what kind of uh, media did you use for that, sir? Uh, it's acrylic. Acrylic. Acrylic on uh, lucite uh, board. Great. Yeah. It's uh, the title of the painting is United States of Greed and Money, and um, and uh, the artist is. Um, uh, William Drummond II, who's running in District 1, so I'm sure you know someone could Google that and, and find it there, and I'll show it here on the um, uh, during this uh, interview. What about, um, now let's see, let's take a look at a couple of uh, issues here, like um, what about the budget? Um, what, what, what are some solutions you have, and um, yeah, what do you, or, or just thoughts you have on the budget, sir, and, and what you would like to see ha done to improve that situation? Well, the way the budget is now, um, everyone's take, 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 and they don't want to give anything back. So what needs to be done is that needs to be balanced out uh, so that there is enough money coming in to take and pay the current expenses. Um, every single household in America has to do that. So why can't the government? Why can't the government take and... Well, because they, they can borrow it um, from the Federal Reserve, right? So isn't that the reason why they can't do it? Because if they actually had to use tax, they are taxing us. They're just doing it in a different way by making our prices go up. Oh, I, you have no disagreement on me with that because the you have prices going up and up and up, yet jobs are not paying enough to keep up with those. And I don't see how a group of men who say they love this nation can take and sit there and spend more, spend everyone else's money, and not be willing to put their own into the pot. That's just not right. So, okay, what do you think about the fair tax, like what we have in Florida, like just a sales tax um, without any, like, no, like, 999, just, just one, you know, nine or, or whatever. Um, have you looked into the fair tax? Do you have any, do you think that might be something that could work, possibly, or do you have other proposals? It could help, but it really, you need to have something that will encompass everyone, something that will take and make sure that the government is funded. And that also means taking and getting rid of special interests. Uh, I'm not talking about, like, environmental protection. I mean, we have to have that, because if we don't have certain structures and certain rules and certain regulations, the corporations... Well, let me ask you this. Like, um, like what about small and mid-sized businesses? I mean, so, yeah, everyone should pay their fair share of taxes, but would you ensure that small and mid-sized businesses are not going to, you know, have a, more taxes? No, I mean, we want to take and make it so that everyone has a chance to prosper. You want, this, this country was founded on small and mid-sized businesses. Literally, it was founded and supported by... That's right, yeah, absolutely. We need to take and have regulations in place that will help foster growth in the local job market. You need to uh, have it so that people can take and not have to move, but are able to take and actually live and work in their community to help support their community. Without community, you don't have a nation. And why do you think we've shifted away from that? Do you, you know? When you have corporations that say that they're people and when you have corporations that ship all their jobs overseas because they just want to rake in as much as they can without giving anything back to society, that's the problem. Yeah, that's, I mean, that that's true. If, if corporations, well, here's the point, like if corporations, you know, can have the same rights as people, then, you know, shouldn't they be, um, you know, have the death penalty too sometimes if they commit murder and stuff like that? <laughs> if corporations want to be people, then they need to live under the same laws and rules as people as well and be held accountable for the same. Yeah. Well, um, now what about foreign and policy? Y yeah, and, and, and you know what? I, I think um, that is true. I, I mean, you know, we have corporations that are getting like no bid contracts and, and, and they're really, when they do stuff like that, 
they're taking money from the small and mid-sized businesses to fund themselves. And, um, and, and you know, we had welfare reform in the 90s. Maybe in the uh, 21st century we can have corporate welfare reform. And also may, maybe that, um, uh, well, I'll come back to that. I kind of lost my thought there. But what do you think about foreign policy um, and uh, our foreign policy, our relationships with countries, um, our um, uh, treaties with other countries? Uh, overall as far as military goes if they expect us to be the police force then they should be paying our taxes to fund the police force otherwise they need to it, it needs to be both ways I mean you can't take and just have us policing the world we have enough problems here that's not to say that uh, we can't get involved overseas we can offer support we can offer information we can offer plans that will help there are many different things that we can do that do not require military action. Now, yes, there are humanitarian concerns, but still, if you want to take in, change something, uh, yes, you need a hammer to take and hammer in a nail, but you need more than just that hammer and the nail. You need a whole entire structure behind it. And right now, there is no structure behind that. There is no exit strategy to be able to get out of these situations. If, if we're going to rule the world, then why not just say that we're going to rule the world since a lot of people and a lot of because we Well, because we know it's wrong, yeah, and we shouldn't be doing that, absolutely. But I hear what you're saying. If you're going to do something, do it all the way or, or you, you know. Or not at all. Right, yeah. Yeah, why pretend? Let's um, let's let be a self-aware. Really, is what you're saying, right? Aware of what we're doing. Call it for what it is. I mean, we're in other people's problems. We better have our own house in order. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's 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 uh, very true. And there's a lot of resources going overseas. Um, that uh, we don't know what those. Um, you know, the potentials could have been. I, I mean, we can just look in hindsight of what we could have done with um, trillions of dollars um, that could have been used here in the United States while, um, you know, there's a so-called recession going on. And, uh, and so um, what, what, um, what about uh, the individual mandates uh, and the health care reform? What do you think about that, sir? Well, I don't see anything in the Constitution that gives any governing body the ability to declare that everyone must take and pay for a commercial product. Yeah, that that doesn't sound right. I mean, yeah, that's 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 true. Um, so everyone else if, can force the other people to buy their stuff, so they can um, be able to pay for the uh, you know insurance that they're forced to pay. I mean, if the government wants to take and make it so that everyone has health insurance, then you need a one-payer pro product, one that takes and comes out of, out of taxes. It would need to be a specific tax. Yeah, what about, that's right, and it's it's a public, it's accountable to the public and, and stuff like that. If you were to do that, um, what about this? What about kind of like the post office pays for itself? You could have a public option that pays for itself, but you would reduce the costs of like um, of uh, executives and um, advertising and, and and probably some other you know paperwork and then stuff like that. You'd be able to bargain buying in bulk. And some which we're not allowed to do for the prescription drugs, I guess. But um, uh, what do you think about that? I, personally, I think the biggest cost from health care is not necessarily the treatment, but it's what's behind the treatment. Uh, I've talked to doctors who say, I, I've literally seen doctors go out of business because they have to pay too much in liability insurance and malpractice insurance to be able to actually practice medicine. Yeah, I mean, they're already being forced to buy insurance, huh? Yes. So you've got them being forced to buy insurance to be able to stay in business where otherwise they get sued. And then you've got people who take and have to buy insurance to take and go to a doctor. And then, then some of these insurance policies that are out there are scam insurance. In other words, you take and pay, I don't know, $150 a month, but in the end, you've actually got to pay $5,000 
before the insurance actually pays anything. But they call that insurance. That's a deductible, yeah. Um, and uh, but that that would be catastrophic insurance. And um, but you know what the uh, the uh, what the people call the Obamacare. I forgot what the official name of it is, but it's. Um, it, there's a lot of companies that are exempt from it. That's number one. And, and number two is that um, uh, it, it, it doesn't allow you to own catastrophic insurance if that's what you wanted. Um, so you would have to, and, and you know what? A lot of the insurance companies, couldn't they say, like, um, if you, if for, in order for you to keep this insurance that's mandated, like, you have to do these and these kind of tests. Um, you have to have, like, a, a vaccine shot, um, and you have to do certain things. Oh, yeah, and they would make sure that there was a deductible that wouldn't be able to be paid for those services. Right, right. So they can choose the which ones to get it or not. If you take regulations and get rid of them, you wind up with people who are unscrupulous, who will take advantage of those loopholes to force people to pay more. Well, now, the thing of, regulations are kind of like, they're kind of like court cases that have been, like, settled, aren't, aren't they? So that it prevents a lot more court cases having the exact same situation? Sometimes, uh, but uh, take, take the regulations that were on the bank. Bush administration took and got rid of those regulations, and then shortly thereafter, all of a sudden, all the banks couldn't take and collect anything. They couldn't take and make any money. All of a sudden, everything broke. But when the regulations were in place, everyone was prospering. Now, that there, can't be just coincidence. What do you think about a sunset law? Because some regulate. Now, I agree, there could be some good regulations. Even. Um, a libertarian like Ron Paul voted to keep Glass-Steagall. Did you know that? Um, so th there could be some regulations in the situation that we're in right now that might be necessary. Um, and if you were to get rid of regulations, you'd have to do it in, in, in the proper order to, to, to mean anything. But, um, but I mean, you know, you can make a good case for some regulations, but then there are some other regulations that, um, you, you know, prevent competition, like industries protecting themselves, and, you know, the FDA, you know, having your beef inspected is a good thing. Yes, absolutely, we don't want mad cow disease or anything like that, but at the same time, um, you, you know, they do prevent some new drugs from coming in, and, and then they also let some bad ones slip by because, you know, they're bought and sold out. And so, but, and there's also other regulations at the local levels. Um, uh, but what do you think about the sunset clause? Th that way, if there's bad regulations, you'd have to vote on it, like, again, every 10 years. And um, if there needed to be tweaks, people would be forced to make them. And then if it was bad, you know, it would just uh, expire. No, I agree completely. I mean, you should have some kind of structure to be able to revisit the law. If you take and enact a law that is wide and encompassing, then you need to regularly come back to check and see if that law is still applicable. If it's not, then let it die. If it needs to be adjusted, then you take and create a new one and let the old one die. Right, right, exactly. I mean, there are some, have you ever visit, like, seen those, like, quote books or whatever of just the weirdest laws in the country and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely are weird ones um, that should expire. Um, uh, what about... Um, you know, uh, what about industrial hemp? Do you think we should be able to manufacture that, make ethanol from that instead of um, corn that's subsidized, that's raising the prices of all the foods because it's subsidized and, uh, and a lot of products have corn in it? And um, I have problems with corn. Yeah. I actually have an allergy to corn. Oh, so, it, I mean, so you have to really watch the ingredients, huh? Yes, I do. Yeah. But as far as industrial hemp, it can be used in building materials, it can be used to make clothes, it can be made to, used to be make shoes, it can be used to make fuel, it can be used to make so many different things, and I never really understood why it was illegal. Yeah, I, it, that's, and doesn't that do something to everyone's psyche kind of in the background? Like, you know, we're, everything's mostly normal except there's just this one weird thing, and is anyone paying attention to that? Does anyone see that in the corner there, <laughs> you know, that that's illegal and it, it, it shouldn't be? But, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of strange, uh, and um, that's, uh, you know, um, I think isn't the, con the Declaration of Independence or the Constitution, like, printed on hemp? I'm pretty sure. 
something like that was, or the original copy was. Um, what do you think about the Patriot Act, sir? The Patriot Act is not very patriotic. It's just used to control. It doesn't do any, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't do anything to protect American citizens. Yeah, I mean, isn't, like, the Constitution say, like, if um, someone is going to be able to, if the government's going to investigate somebody, that um, in order to prevent abuse, um, that they have to get a court order from a judge? There has to be due process. Yeah. And that uh, people need to be judged by their peers. Not just summarily uh, said that they're wrong. Um, so, what, now, what about um, if you be, were elected, um, would you uh, caucus with one of the two parties so you can get, like, be in a committee and all that kind of stuff? If you did, which one would you choose? It would depend on the subject matter at hand. The thing is, is uh, as far as I'm concerned, there shouldn't be an aisle. Right. I agree. I, there's, I everyone agree. should be coming together to find the best option for the specific problem at hand then take and draft a bill together for that, and then debate the issues on that, and then submit a final draft to the Senate. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's, that's true. It's like when, once a party gets control of the legislative branch in the Congress, or I guess the Senate, I mean, it's, it's really, um, they, they become a mini government unto themselves, pretty much. Our government was never meant to be a two-party system. That's why you have three branches of government. Right. So that that's... no one branch could have control over the other. Oh, yeah, and, and I'm, hasn't uh, George Washington warned... I'm sure there's some famous quotes where he warns us about uh, the political parties. Uh, I, don't require, I don't remember any specific uh, wording about political parties. Yeah, I... But I do know that okay. they say, like, tyranny... If a government... Is, becomes oppressive, that's tyranny. Right, if, um, right, when the government um, fears the people, there is liberty, and when people fear the government, there's tyranny. And, uh, Thomas Jefferson, I believe. Thomas Jefferson is correct, yeah. yeah that's what I've, I've seen anyways. Um, and uh, now, uh, uh, let's see, the, um, what, you know, in 2008, when we had all those big bailouts, would you have voted for that? Um... The thing is, is that was voted as a whole when it should have been voted as an individual thing per. Because there may have been some that needed to be saved, but then there were others that, why are we doing anything? They've already got money. I mean, maybe instead of keeping some of the executives, they could let some of the mid-sized banks and stuff, um, you, you know, buy up parts of those big companies and stuff like that. Um... But, um, but okay, all right, so you might have, it just, um, it, it, or, or you don't, it, or you say it should be, and I agree, a lot of bills have too much stuff, like, clunked into it. it it's like, you know, they could have um, legislation that, of two different things that have absolutely nothing to do with each other. Um, and, and that's something that maybe should be, um, like, Congress should be able to vote, like, in a line item way, you, you know, not the president. Um, and actually, a lot of people like the line item veto. I kind of think that's not a good thing. Um, you know, the president shouldn't be able to legislate like that. Uh, what do you think about the line item veto? Considering the amount of pork that passes over his desk, I think it's needed. Yeah. Because Congress doesn't have the fortitude or the ability to govern itself. Um, th they... Uh, they, definitely, um, they need. We need to elect them out. I mean, that's why, at least in the House, every two years um, we have the election. It's done that way on purpose. So that way, um, why do you think? All right, here's a question, and this really comes to it. Um, I mean, um, I, and I'm sure you would probably make the right decisions. I just um, would hope that you know, on stuff like the bailout where it shouldn't be included, that you, you know that um, you consider boycotting like a bill like that until you, you know and enforce us to uh, on something big. But um, but um, wh why why do you think people um, why why are we still electing Republicans and Democrats if they're doing all these horrible things? Because people are blind. They don't see it. They don't want to see it. They just they just vote to 
say that they voted a lot of times. Um, I was trying to take and get petitions to be able to take and get on the ballot, mm -hmm. and I'd say 90% of the people that I talked to were willing to sign because they wanted to see a change. Right. The other 10%, they were like they never wanted to vote. They don't want to get involved. They say that their vote doesn't count anyway. <laughs> uh, and that the whole thing about people just going back in there over and over and over again, they don't see why they should even try. Yeah, That's and, and some of them even say worse. Some of them say, like, you're giving legitimacy to the system, so the biggest thing would be to have, like, a 0% turnout, right? I mean, like, that's going to help anything. Oh, no, the, the people who were running and there's no, come, no people showing up, they'd say, yay, I won. Right. They have no shame. Like, people are, uh, that, to have that assumption assumes that these politicians have any sense of shame, and, and they don't, do they? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, you don't have to answer that, but I... I, I many of yeah. them don't. Yeah, I, I don't think they, they, they wouldn't care if they won. Like, look at George Bush. I mean, he didn't care that he won, that he lost, you, you know? <laughs> and so he became the, the president, and he was, you know, it was all right with him. Um, and uh, so, yeah, they, they, they have no shame. And, um, and also, um, they're just going to, you're going to have the same people in charge. Um, instead of boycotting, you know, the whole system, why not just boycott those two parties? And... There are people that are running. There's more options that we can choose from. I mean... Um, Other thing that would help is if we had actual term limits for people for all the government offices. If there were term limits, and you know the first could only stay in there so long, then you would be guaranteed that there would be fresh blood going into there all the time. There would be fresh ideas. It wouldn't be the same stale stuff all the time. Yeah, I was originally against that because, you know, I thinking like if someone really liked a person shouldn't they be able to keep them but at the same time i i, I can hear what you're saying and it probably would force more turn turn turnover that which you know would probably be a good thing overall you know so instead of people worrying about oh my god can i keep my office can i keep my cushy job can i keep all the perks and benefits i've got instead of them worrying about that they would actually worry about the governing of the united states what do you think about this? What, what do you think? Um, here's a thought that I, I haven't heard like around um, the grapevine, really. It's um, what about, you know, you were saying you, you watch C-SPAN, right? I, I love C-SPAN. And, um, and uh, it, Brian Lamb, he's, you know, I love watching the call-in shows. And then I like watching the uh, legislative branches after that. Like first you get to hear from the people in the morning. And then after that, the legislative branch. And then so on, and then they have other specials and stuff once in a while, but um, in series and stuff like that. What about an election channel that's like modeled after C-SPAN, kind of like you have a national one for all federal offices, and then you have like C-SPAN two for the states and stuff like that. And that way, um, it, it, you don't get the it's not controlled by one party. No, it's it, it w there'd be some rules like anyone. Um, I was going to say that that would, you know, get on the ballot, but I suppose, you know, anyone who's qualified, anyone who's qualified would have to have equal time, all right? So if there's eight candidates running and there's 24 hours in a day, you each would get three hours each. And then there would be um, like 10 debates. Um, there would be 10 debates. They would be like two hours each. I mean, or enough where everyone gets like about a half an hour of questions. And they would all have to be asked the same questions, given the same amount of time. Um, and so, uh, and then the debates would replay like um, for like a whole week. And, um, and, uh, and, and those would be the rules. I mean, if you qualified, um, then, uh, then, then you have to get the, the space. I mean, if you did what you had to do to do that, um, and, and it's not like there's going to be 20 people. I mean, usually there's just like eight or, or so like that. So, um, I mean, and it probably wouldn't cost too much, and it would be on the public airwaves. And so that way it would directly compete with the CNN debates, and it would be, you know, it would become a big player right away. I mean... Do you think I that's think that is an excellent idea? Yeah. Being able to take the control out of the mainstream media, which the two parties are buying off, is again this is my personal opinion. I think that they're being bought off because uh, they take and raise all the money for ads and such. But if you had an organization that would take and give equal time to all the players involved, then America would be able to 
see the actual choices that are available and be able to make a more informed decision come election day. Yeah, yeah, it'd be called, you could call it the election channel or something like that. Um, what do you think about um, the Second Amendment? Do people have the right to bear arms? Sword, knife, gun, whatever. Yeah. A, a well-armed society is a polite society. A laser gun, maybe in the future, right? And uh, what about, um, which goes to NASA? I mean, you're in Florida and um, also part of the United States and the world. I mean, what do you think about NASA? How should we be treating NASA? NASA should be a civilian government organization. Um, they should be open to doing actual corporate or public work or company work where people take in, like, maybe rent the launch pads or rent time on the computers or rent time for research or whatever. And on the other hand, you've got government satellites that need to be tracked. You've got uh, government encryption that needs to be handled. So really, NASA should be on both sides of the fence, not just one or the other. Uh, well, um, and so what about a mission to Mars? Should we go on a mission to Mars? Considering the rate of population growth on on this planet, if they were able to viably show that Mars could be uh, terraformed to be able to see another planet that could be used, then yes, it does make sense to actually go and look. And the thing is, is if you've got NASA being both government controlled as well as civilian controlled, then all the funds are not going to be coming just from the government, because then they would have the ability to actually raise funds from selling services to the civilian sector. Well, yeah, yeah, and it's kind of like the Green Bay Packers are kind of a civilian-controlled football team or something. But, um, like, and that's true. I mean, I mean, people should be able to have tourism. There should be private industries being able to go into space as well. And, um, and maybe, you know, they'll go to Mars first. But don't people need that sense, uh, Some I think, of adventure? Again, like, I mean, there's, you know, a couple hundred years ago, the sense of adventure for the new world. And, uh, you know, and that, that's what caused the Renaissance, I believe. Um, and so, I don't know. I mean, it's, it could be a good sense of adventure just to do something like that. And I'm sure we, there would be benefits that would pay off in technology and, and science and things like that. Well, definitely. If you take and figure out what it's going to take to be able to go to Mars in a reasonable amount of time, then all the technologies that are created for that can then be sold into the private sector for, I don't know, better air conditioning, better heating, better fuel economy. Uh, better insulation for housing. The thing is, is if you take all the technology that's necessary to be able to put someone on Mars, how much of that do you think can be used to take and sell into the private sector? Oh, yeah. You know what? And that should be public domain. Anything that the government invests in, like it shouldn't be just bidded to one company. It's kind of like um, like we have software that's public domain. And look how advanced, like, you know, software like Firefox and stuff has, has become because of that. Um, but if you had the government inventing things and said, here, we just invented this. Here you go, private sector. Why don't you just uh, make s stuff out of it, you know? Right, and compare those designs or patents or whatnot against what the rest of the world has, and if it is not more advanced or it would cause problems for the United States, then yes, let it out into the public domain. Yeah, um, yeah and uh, what, what, what about Internet? Um, like, do you, would, you, would you have voted for uh, SOPA, where um, basically corporations could say that person's c copywriting, violating, and then they could shut you down before you even had a trial? The thing is, is that went even further than that. The way that the law was written, they could shut the entire server down, not just your website. So if you had a website that had copyrighted material on it, on the mainframe in, say, Cincinnati, then they could take and go in and shut down the mainframe, as well as all the computers that are attached to that mainframe, which would effectively put a great big black hole in the Internet and shut the net down. Well, I'm, that's, I'm glad it didn't pass. I, I mean, that's... Um, I also design websites. Cool, cool, all right. <laughs> well, 
so. Th then you're definitely against it because, yeah, like, w and, and that's a good thing because a lot of this, you know, um, like computer magazines and stuff like that were totally against it. And um, I think people should listen because that's one of the good things going on in our country right now is the Internet still. You know, we haven't killed it yet. So um, uh, what about, um, you know, a lot of people who are pro-life and pro-choice would want to know, um, where you stand on abortion? Government has no right uh, legislating abortion. It uh, the, the way that the government was set up was that uh, Congress shall not, shall not enact any law that is not within the interest of the United States. How is abortion an interest to the United States when we already have overpopulation? Okay, now what about this? Do you think, now that's, you know, um, what, and that's pretty much what we have now. I, I mean, so that's, do you agree that there shouldn't be any um, federal funding for that because of some people's, like, spiritual beliefs that if, they're, if their money goes to it, that somehow, you know, they're going to go to hell? Um, that is a tricky situation. I have my own personal views and beliefs. But as far as legislation goes, government should not have any role in abortion. And, and you know what? If it has to happen, I guess, like, you know, the morning after pill, and that's not really an abortion. That's just, like, preventing that's the pregnancy true. from happening. I mean, hopefully it, it's really not an issue anymore anyways, I mean, with, you know, things like that. But um, uh, it, it's um, – so let's see here. Let's – I'm tr tr now. What about um, how, how you would try to work with Congress if if you were in there? Like, you know, would you try to build consensuses, re reach across the aisle? I, I mean, how would you kind of try to? Um, I would do what I've always done in my life: is talk to each individual involved with the bill at hand, find out the pros and cons, and then let them know my decision and why. And from there, that's how you build consensus. And what would you say to somebody if they say they're like in a big industry and then that they're going to take care of you after you retire if you would pass certain legislation? So what kind of painting do you want? <laughs> Great. Um, well, uh, <laughs> no, I was just I'm kind of... I'm serious. I mean, I'm, yeah. not going to take, I'm not going to take kickbacks. If they want to give me $10,000 for a painting, fine, but they're not going to buy my vote. Well, um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm stubborn. <laughs> and uh, now, is there any issues that I, you, you know, that um, I haven't uh, addressed here um, that that you can think of right now um, on this Sunday night? Well, let's see. It's Sunday, according to Christians, it's the Lord's Day, and this country was not founded on Christianity. And anyone who says that is just trying to blow smoke. This country was founded on common sense laws to break away from religious and political tyranny and oppression. So trying to drag religion through and into politics is going to do nothing but make problems. So keep the two separate. I understand. Well, and that r have reminds own me. own personal views. Yeah, right. But cannot legislate religion. Right, and you would never want to, and you know what, you're, you could say, like, what you're trying to say, I hope, I think is um, what I've heard, one argument is that you'd actually protect religion more, because the, the more that religion is in government, and, and they get, um, you know, used to getting, you, you know, payments and stuff like that for funding, you know, certain things, that kind of makes them more um, dependent on the government too and then it probably corrupts them so i mean uh keeping it out of gover uh, go government or legislation really except to protect it i mean you agree that everyone has the protection to practice spiritually what they want right well i'm um, yes and uh christ said one very important thing that illustrates this give unto caesar what is caesar's caesar's give unto god which is god yeah, and that can go on, I guess, a couple of different levels. And also the golden rule. I mean, isn't that really what, the, like, we had some founding fathers that got together and um, 
they based something, that, you know, legislation, they, they wrote it down, but it's based really on a golden rule society. It's kind of um, do unto others as you want them to do unto you. And then I suppose in that spirit, um, like the Declaration of Independence is a spirit to the Constitution. So, I mean, it's people can, you know, will say that you know, they can't separate their spirituality from themselves. And and well, I, I don't think they have to if they recognize everyone else has the same rights also. And then that way we're not going to kill each other when we disagree. We can debate and, and we can all be um, taken seriously uh, issue by issue. The majority of the religions out there have one defining thread, which is if you harm none, including yourself, do as you will. Right, that right. That is one, the one common thread. And it has to have those two parts with it, you know, <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, if, if people take and practice that one common thread, even in government, well, you know government's going to be better because they're going to be looking after everyone and not just themselves. If you take and pass a law, say like about driving safety, that every single car has to have brakes. Simplistic, right? You're going to have people who are going to go against that and say, oh, we don't need brakes. But the thing is, is in betterment of public safety and the betterment of of the good of the people, of the entire nation, we have a law that says you have to have brakes. So, what was that self-centered, or was that in betterment of the good? Yeah, that's, um, well, that's definitely in betterment of the good. Um, and uh, that's, uh, now, <laughs> having brakes, yeah, I guess, wasn't that Ralph Nader or someone who brought that up? Um, and, um, or something like that. Uh, now, I don't know, I'm getting ready to turn 48. Yeah. Well, well, happy birthday. Um, what, when, when's that, sir? July 7th. All right. All right. Um, well, how about this? To kind of sum it all up, um, what is your vision? Do you have a vision? Um, like, or would you like to share a vision um, with, uh, of uh, what's possible? Well, we need to take and have banks and corporations more accountable to the people of the United States. The government is working for the people. People don't work for the government. The government's supposed to be working for the people, not just for one select group. Also, we need to take and have rules and regulations in place that will help job growth. We need to have it so that, uh, say like a person who has come up with a great idea, but they're not able to take and find the funding necessary. Well, we should have programs that would take and pair them up with people who might have the financing, but they don't have the vision. So if you take a person with the vision with no money and you take a person with money who's looking for a vision and put them together, hey, that's a marriage. That's a marriage made perfect in money. And that would allow innovation. Yeah, you could... Have things that will allow innovation. Do a lot of networking like that. We yeah. need to have services in place to where people can take and better find jobs. And I don't mean just going on the Internet and typing in and looking for something because when you take and do that... Well, okay, here's a structural thing. How are we ever... Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt you, sir, but here's, here's a question I thought of before. It, it's, here's, a, here's a situation. Um, we keep trading with other countries, um, and we keep losing jobs, right? And, um, and the rate that we're going, it's unsustainable. I, I mean, so what are we going to do? I mean, the, the wages are going down because we keep wanting cheap prices um, for goods. Um, I mean, isn't that just going to, uh, isn't it, are we in a downward word spiral, or? If we keep shopping, shipping all the jobs overseas, who's going to buy them? Who's going to buy the product? Because uh, a person can only buy so many. If you have people who are not working, who are not making good money, then they're not going to be able to buy products anyway. So, if you take and make sure that goods shipped in have to be sold at the same or near the same price as goods made in the United States, then that's going to balance itself out. You won't need well, what about, any uh, type you, of regulation. Do you envision a society, what, what if like a lot of things do you think like possible, and this might be 100 years out, but it's 
probably not too far away that automation might become a major player and and, um, and that might lose a lot of jobs like do, do we have to think about like ways to not just um, worry about jobs but think about the whole structure I mean like you said small and mis mid-sized businesses like people that grew up probably in the 50s and stuff they were used to something where you climb up the corporate ladder and the corporation's going to give you the retirement and, and, and everything. You have to belong to a corporation, and that's why we've kept a lot of these corporations because they're so important to the fabric of our society. But what about start thinking of a society where we're not as dependent on that, where we actually um, are more sustainable, like where we reduce costs, like where we can eliminate people's electric bills completely by funding um, solar for everyone. And imagine everyone having an extra $100 a month because they have no electric bill month after month for the next 75 years, which is what some of these solar panels are made to last for, and they can withstand hail and stuff like that. So you totally eliminate that. You know, totally get rid of property taxes. Ensure that if you own a home, that, that, that you get to keep it once you pay for it and, and stuff like that. And, um, and then, you know, maybe some more um, local solutions for, like, food. So are, isn't that people's major cost, food, housing, um, utilities? So like housing, uh, maybe uh, open up some land where people can build on it and have more habitat for humanities and stuff like that. We have enough housing right now to house every single family in a, in a, in a standing home. But uh, you've got millions of homes out there that are standing empty because of what happened with the financial crisis. You know what Obama should have done? Um, is if you're going to spend those trillions, which I, I could make an argument for not even doing that, but if you're going to, why not just give the money to the people and then they would have, but on one condition, they have to use it to pay their mortgage. And then that money would be, go to the banks, right? Um, so um, it, it, the banks would still get it, but the thing is, so would the people, you would have helped both parties instead of just giving it right to the banks. If you would have taken that entire block of money that they took and gave to the financial sector and divvied it up between every single American, you would have seen a vast influx of money going into the economy, which would have actually created jobs. Do you think we owe all that money back? I mean, do you think at least some of it probably could be written off? Because it, it's it, we were robbed, weren't we, in some ways? I think the bank should pay everything back with interest. If they expect to take and give a loan to someone and expect it all back, well, I, I, I feel that that so-called bailout should be more of a loan and that it should be paid back with interest. And that interest should be returned to the American people. It's There's... Um, do you think we should be able to audit the Federal Reserve and find out? Every branch of the government should be held accountable for its financing. Absolutely, and it probably sh is. should be a branch, huh, instead of being a private um, corporation. Clinton, Clinton took and bullied Congress and the Senate until he got a balanced budget, and there was a surplus. The but he did steal out of Social Security to do it. Actually, he took and actually shored up Social Security. He said he couldn't be touched. Did he? Yes. As I remember, Al Gore was trying to pass that lockbox, but never was able to. You know. But the thing is, I'll is have to look into Social that. Security yeah. left alone. Medicaid was played with, but Social Security was left alone. But, I mean, okay, Social maybe it was Security. Medicaid then. But they took tr funds, and that's why Social Security is in a state that is in now with because you know it does have a you know it's probably solvent but the thing is they've already spent that money on you know the empire and uh one congressman said it all goes into the same till that was their explanation for why there wasn't any money in social security they said all of it goes into the same till they, they treat it like it oh. does yeah it's um now here's one final issue i i, I just thought of what, what do you think should people like be able to know if like um their food is should we mandate labeling for genetically modified foods definitely uh, and, and it sh the labeling should be visible like i mean they take and put in there this may contain wheat this may contain this this may contain that How hey, i just want to warn you i have a storm going on here and um if we, we do get disconnected I do have to let you know that it, it's it's not me. It's but there is a storm going on here. So but I'm sorry a to interrupt. Tropical storm just south of us. Yeah. Yep. But uh, 
Back to genetically modified foods, so though. They definitely should be labeled and clearly visible. Definitely. Definitely. Because, do you know what? Here's an argument for that. Now, a lot of I've heard some talk that some libertarians think, oh, you know, we shouldn't do that. It's not within the libertarian philosophy, but it actually is. It actually is in the heart of libertarian philosophy because if I sold you an orange, or I said I sold you an orange and it was a tangerine, wouldn't that be fraud? Like, if you ch put fish genes inside of a tomato, you can't call it a tomato anymore. And to label it as a to they shouldn't even be able to call it a tomato. You know what they should have to label it as? What they put the patent for it as. Because Definitely. if they thought it was a tomato, then why would they feel the need to put a patent on it? If they didn't put a patent on it, um, then, uh, then, then maybe you know they would have some case, but I still disagree with it. But the fact that they put a patent on it makes it no longer a tomato. No, it's some other kind of food. It's something. To and, and you know what? It could damage. They were talking about in Mexico, um, like all these corn crops being, uh, you know, mixed with the um, genetically modified corn crops from the United States, and and um, it, it's. Uh, it's ruining the environment, um, or at, it could, could because it's out, it's getting out of control. There's many nations that don't even allow high fructose corn syrup to be put in any food whatsoever. Yet it's the major sweetener that's used in the United States. Did you know also that dextrose, which is also a corn sugar, is used as a binder to salt to add iodine? Yeah, a lot of these companies are um, just as bad as the tobacco companies. You know. Um, well, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, it was good to talk to you, Cleve. Uh, you know what? You can uh, go visit your website here. It is um, Drummond, D-R-U-M-M-O-N-D, for, F-O-R, Congress, dot org, and take a look at the issues. And um, uh, so uh, it's really great talking to you, um, William, and... Um, uh, I'll say goodbye to you after I end this interview, and uh, thank you very much for your time today, sir. I appreciate it. You're quite welcome. Thanks.